What's up guys? Welcome back to Fisher Hex. This is Travis here. Today we are officially going to start building the 300 gallon tank. And in this video I'm going to show you guys how I set up the steel stand with plywood, uh, cutting it, painting it, and getting it ready, attaching it to the steel, as well as um, working on the new geo sump, showing you guys kind of how I got it ready to go underneath the stand uh, via the foam mat, all that good stuff. So we're going to cover that here in this video and uh, let's get into it. Now, one quick thing before we start diving into this video is I just want to say thank you for all the support over the last 10 months with Coral Sales, Skype, Patreon, all that kind of stuff, and uh, the individual donations. I just want to say thank you because it's the little things that really start to add up when it comes to building a system, just like the plywood, the paint, the screws, all that kind of stuff. And you really don't realize how much it's going to be until you're sitting at the checkout going, wow, another 100 bucks just to get the tank up and running. And uh, without your guys' support, this wouldn't be happening right now. So I really just want to say thank you for all your help. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this build. Now, I do want to mention right off the bat that I am putting uh, plywood only on the back of the tank stand. I'm not putting anything on the sides or the front just because I really want to look at the sump and I really want to see the system as a whole. And uh, by covering the stand up completely, it kind of hides everything. And uh, I just didn't want to go that route for this build. Now, the first piece of wood that we're looking at here is the one on the back wall. It has the two main holes in it, which are for the three one and a half inch drain lines. Now, I did wait till I actually plumbed the sump and everything was lined up before I drilled uh, the return line to the tank. But other than that, I went ahead and actually slid this piece of wood behind the tank itself, lined everything up and used a pencil to kind of trace where the frame was and kind of uh, estimated where I wanted the holes to be. I actually went so far to bringing the uh, overflow box underneath the tank stand and kind of lined everything up and drew where I wanted those holes to be. After that, I just took them out, drilled through and cut the holes and went ahead and painted them. Now I did put about three layers of this Rust-Oleum oil-based paint. It's the same paint that I use on all my frag tanks, pretty much on every tank. And uh, it's pretty resistant to the salt water. Now, uh, I don't foresee any water getting on the back of this, um, you know, this piece of wood. But I did only paint the one side. I didn't paint the opposite side just because it would have took a ton of paint to do it. And I'm not going to be seeing that other side anyway. So I went ahead and painted uh, the front with three coats. And it seems to be working out pretty good so far. Now, as you guys saw previously, the bottom piece, which is for the sump to sit on, I also gave that a good uh, three coats, the front, only one side, as well as the edges, and uh, that worked out just fine. Now, we're going to move over to how am I going to hold this uh, piece of plywood in place. I actually went ahead and picked up these three uh, Velcro straps. They're pretty cool from Home Depot. I think it was like four bucks or something for three of them. Now, I did get some uh, other Velcro, but I didn't end up using it for this. I actually used it for some modules that I had later on, but... Uh, what I did is I went ahead and uh, screwed these uh, kind of, I wouldn't call them zip tie like things, but they're Velcro ties into the plywood and then kind of wrapped them around the steel stand and uh, held them in place that way. It works out pretty good. I put one on each side as well as one in the middle where the drain lines are and it was good to go. I will say after adding the plywood to the stand, it really brought the system together as a whole. It gave a nice area, a welcoming area for the new sump, and I think it's going to be a good contrast between the red, white, and blue and the black background. And uh, that's what we're going to move into now is I'm going to show you guys a quick look at this sump, kind of how I got it ready via the foam and got it underneath the stand. Now, I will be doing an in-depth video on this sump later on once the build, build series has kind of moved forward, and uh, you guys will see every single aspect of it, the ins and outs and everything. Now, I do want to give a quick shout out to geosreef.com for sponsoring a huge portion of this sump. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's completely custom, uh, red, white, and blue, America theme. You guys know that I love that. And there's nothing else like it in the world, and that's what really um, is just really amazing about it. Now, I ended up actually driving to Ohio, made a day trip out of it to pick this sump up, and I left about 3 a.m. and then got back about 3 p.m. It was a, a very long day's worth of driving, but it was worth it um, for a couple reasons. One, I actually saved about $200. Uh, the total shipping was about $300. I spent about $100 bucks on gas, food, all that kind of stuff. So I saved not only $200 bucks that I used to get the system running, but I also avoided any chances of the carrier cracking it, uh, breaking it, anything. And, uh, and that is more comforting. I would have drove... 10, 12, 15, 20 hours one way to pick this up than take any chances of a carrier breaking it um, because I waited so long for this system and, you know, the sump in general that, you know, it wouldn't have mattered where it was in the country. I would have drove there to pick it up. So to actually install this underneath the sump, you have to go ahead and add a foam mat. Now, I did pick this stuff up from BulkReefSupply.com, and I got enough to cover the sump as well as take care of the ATO reservoir and had some left over for future builds. Now, basically, I just set the sump on it and went ahead and cut it out with a razor, and it worked out great. Now, it was a little bit of a pain in the butt trying to get it underneath the stand, but um, I could actually sit there and lift up the uh, sump itself because it is pretty light, and then go ahead and move the mat around underneath it, and it worked out just fine. So after installing the sump, ATO, and calcium reactor, I really just sat back and just admired how perfectly everything worked out. Now, I definitely had to 
coordinate uh, customacariums.com as well as Geo's Reef to make sure that everything lined up perfectly uh, width wise as well as length. Now there's exactly 96 inches worth of length underneath here and that sump takes up exactly 96 inches between the ATO calcium reactor and the sump. Uh, there's not there's not even a hair worth of uh, wiggle room on either side. So that's perfect as well as the width is absolutely perfect. And um, I just want to say uh, thank you to customacariums.com as well as Geo's Reef for sponsoring this uh, build and I can't wait to see what it looks like here in a couple years. Well, guys, that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. In the next one, we're going to be setting up the uh, return lines as well as the overflow box and do the plumbing on the sump. Either way, guys, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Peace.